This story starts in 1997, 17 years ago, when I was born to two very overprotective parents. I'm sure some of you will know that if you've got overprotective parents, then you grow up to be quite a good liar. Obviously that's not something that I am proud of, but it's something that I've had to embrace and use to my advantage in lots of situations. Again, not to be proud of, of course. So normally as a child I'd use this ability to lie about things like whether I'd done all my homework, whether I'd spent too long on the computer, whether I'd eaten too many sweets. There was one time when I just went nuts and I told the biggest lie I've ever told. I want you to cast your minds back to 2006 when Pokemon cards were cool and your social status was determined by how good your collection was. Pokemon cards, you want to know what one of them is? This is what they look like. Look, that's oddish, that's not a really great one to show you, is it? Um, this one's really shiny. Now, I'd never played a Pokemon game and I don't think I even knew that Pokemon games existed before Pokemon cards. I'd seen the TV show a few times and I didn't really like it, I didn't get what was going on to be honest. But in my school, having Pokemon cards was the thing to do. Like, if you were cool, that's what you did with your lunch, you traded Pokemon cards. I can't remember how I first got any Pokemon cards because I definitely didn't buy them. I think someone kind of pitied me and gave me a few of their really bad ones on the playground once. But I started trading them and eventually over time I worked up a good collection, I got all the shiny ones. Did anyone actually know how they actually worked? Like there were numbers in the corners and no one really knew what they were, they were just like, yeah that one looks pretty, I want that one. I don't know how common this is, I think it's quite common. You know in primary schools you don't have lockers, you just have a little tray where you put all your belongings, like your little books and stuff, because that's what kids do, isn't it? One day I came in after lunch and I put my Pokemon cards in my tray and the tray was literally right behind me because I sat at the back. After my lesson I went and put my stuff back in my tray and I noticed that my Pokemon cards weren't there. It may not seem a big deal that 20 random bits of paper were missing from my tray, but to me it was like the most scandalous thing that could ever happen. Remember that Pokemon cards determined your worth to society, essentially. So I told my teacher straight away because I wanted these back and I wanted whoever had taken them to be punished. Nothing happened for a few days until I went round my best friend's house. She told me to tell my head teacher, which I said that I couldn't do because I didn't know who it was and he wouldn't be able to do anything about, and she told me just to tell him that it was this guy called... Let's call him Brian. So before school, I told my head teacher in the playground because for some reason he had time to be in the playground before school every day, like shouldn't you be actually running the school? And just before we were about to go in and start the school day, he called me out in front of the entire school and asked me to go up to his office as well as this Brian guy. So I went up to the head teacher's office and was standing there for about, well, well it felt like hours. I was so scared, like I was such a goody goody and I'd never been in trouble ever in my whole life. And then I was standing outside the head teacher's office with a guy who I knew hadn't done anything wrong. Once the head teacher finally got there, he talked with us about what had happened. And I said my side of the story, in which I said, I saw Brian's head near my tray and I think he might have stolen them. And he showed me his Pokemon cards to prove that he hadn't stolen mine. He had all my Pokemon cards in his hand. But, like, how? How? How did that happen? He told me he traded them with a year six I think and I think I believed him because I had nothing else to do and it got very messy his mum was called in we had to sign forms it was scary you know and I'm surprised that they actually bothered to do that seeing as it was just like a few little cards like they were not valuable really I literally felt physically sick because I was so worried about getting into trouble about this but somehow I lied and the lie came true, so if there's a god out there, they must love me. I still don't understand how that happened, like, did my friend know? Or was it just, like, a massive coincidence? Weird. It's very weird. Why did I do it? That's what I want to know. Why did I think that that wouldn't get me into trouble? There's not really a moral to this story, because if there was going to be a moral, it would have been, don't lie or you'll get what's coming for you. But that didn't happen, so... Unless you're me, don't lie. I'm thinking of making this into a series of primary school stories because I have quite a lot of them and all of them involve me being a complete idiot and completely stuck up. So if you want to see more of those, let me know. If not, I will see you next week because I'm trying 
very hard at the moment to upload regularly even though college is like so much effort but yeah see you next week peace